Thanks to Dr. Phone for sponsoring this and you'll hear more about their latest deals at the end of this video. If you're looking to make the best out of your iPhone, these tips and tricks will help you master the basics, find new shortcuts and also learn a few advanced tricks that you may have never known existed. Hello guys, my name is Vic with Phone Arena and with the release of the iPhone 12 series, it's a great time to go over these tips and tricks. So let's start with the basics and you will find a time code for this video where you can skip to the more advanced parts if that's what you're looking for. With this in mind, the first tip is how to quickly start the camera without unlocking your phone. On your lock screen you have the camera button in the bottom right and of course you can long press it, but that button is tiny and I find that not very convenient. So instead you can swipe left from the right side of the phone and go directly in the camera much more convenient. The next tip is one of my favorite features in iOS and it's called Spotlight Search. You simply swipe down from about the middle of the screen and you probably already knew that if you used iOS. What you may not know is that here you can type not only the name of an app but also any setting. For example, you may want to add a new language in the keyboard and you don't have to go search for it in settings, you can just type language in Spotlight Search and you instantly go to that setting. Or if you want to see your camera settings, just type camera and the settings result appears below. Or are you looking to disable the auto brightness option? Simply type auto brightness and it appears, super convenient. By the way, if you enjoyed this video so far, we'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. It helps us get our videos to more people and make more awesome content. So back to the tips, the next one is also camera related. Did you know that you can quickly record a video without ever switching to video mode? Simply open the camera, press and hold the shutter button and your iPhone will start recording a short video. The moment you release your finger, the video is over. And that's an easy way to record a quick video and I love using this for capturing impromptu moments. Another camera tip is to use standard formats so you can easily share your photos and videos with a PC or an Android phone. By default, the iPhones use newer formats that other devices may not recognize. That's why I recommend the moment you get your iPhone, you go into settings, then camera, and then formats and select the most compatible format instead of the most efficient one. Now, these compatible formats take up a bit more space on your iPhone, but at least you can easily share them with different devices. And while we're talking camera, next tip is that you can now quickly toggle between video settings right in the camera app. Tap on the numbers in the top left corner to quickly switch between higher resolution 4K and smaller HD files. And also you can record in 30 frames per second for everyday stuff and 60 frames per second, which is more suitable for sporting events, for example. Okay, enough with the camera stuff, iOS also comes with Control Center, where you adjust your brightness, volume and so on. By default, in iOS 14, it also shows you a big shortcut to Apple Home, and that's cool if you use it, but if you don't, it just gets in the way, and it's kind of annoying. So to disable it, open Spotlight Search, type Control Center, and turn off the Show Home Controls option. And while we're here, it's a good idea to add a few useful icons to Control Center. I always add low power mode for easy access and also screen recording. But take a look at the other shortcuts too. And once you add the ones you like, open Control Center again and voila, it's much more useful now. For example, you can tap on the screen record button now and it will start recording. So for example, you can capture your gameplay or something else and then share with somebody. Next up, how do you take a simple screenshot? Now that's easy, press the power key and the volume key for a brief moment and release. Apple also supports expanded screenshots, so you can capture a longer web page. But this works a bit differently than rolling screenshots in Android. First of all, on iOS, this option is only available in the Safari web browser, meaning that you cannot use it in other web browsers like Chrome, for example. So that's a bit of a bummer, but here's how it works. Just take a screenshot in Safari, tap on the screenshot thumbnail and then press full page. You can now crop out the part that you want and once added, you can also draw on top of it, add an arrow to show a specific part or a magnifying glass. Tap done and you can save this as a PDF document in the Files app. Next up, a few battery tips. The iPhone 12 series 
all come with AMOLED screens that use more power showing up brighter colors and less power showing darker colors. So that's why a darker wallpaper is recommended if you want to maximize your battery. You can also use low power mode indicated by a yellow battery icon when it's enabled. So here's what it does. It limits 5G connectivity, reduces app refresh, stops automatic downloads and cuts down on some visual effects. Testing also shows that while in low power mode, the CPU on your iPhone runs at about 70% its regular speed, so this is indeed a powerful switch. I also use dark mode at night. Open spotlight search and type display and here you can tap on automatic and also like me you can select to use dark mode when it gets dark outside. Unfortunately dark mode does not turn the background of web pages in Safari dark, that would be awesome. But here's a neat trick. Once dark mode is enabled, you can enter a specific article and tap the reading mode button at the top left. This will turn the background black and is much easier on your eyes at night if you're reading. Okay, a few more fun tips. Did you know that you can change the accent for Siri? Open again spotlight search and type Siri voice. And here you can pick between American, Australian, British, Indian, Irish and South African accents. As well as a male or a female voice. Cool. Next up, the measure app. If you own a 12 Pro series iPhone, you now get a LiDAR sensor. That's great for augmented reality. One simple example is to just open the measure app and have your kid or a friend stand in front of the camera. It will automatically see that and it will tell you how tall they are with pretty good accuracy. That's quite awesome. Next up, let's dive a bit deeper with some more advanced tips. First, typing. Writing long paragraphs on a mobile device means you're guaranteed to make some mistakes and you often have to go back and make corrections. This requires precise cursor control. So here's how you get it on iOS. With the keyboard open, long press on the spacebar and it transforms into a sort of a touchpad and you can use that. What's new is that you can now also just pick up the text cursor with your fingertip and move it anywhere easily, which is very convenient. And if you're writing longer bits of text, now this works on both iPhone and iPad, you can swipe with three fingers left to undo and right to redo. Or alternatively, you can double tap with three fingers to undo. This is more convenient on the larger Max iPhones or on the iPad, but it's still worth knowing. Next, if you get a lot of pesky calls from unknown colors, you can now easily put a stop to that. Open Spotlight Search and type Silence Unknown Colors. Tap on it and flip the switch and voila, you'll be no longer bothered. Also, you have to explore the Files app on iOS. This file manager app gives you a ton of information. For example, right now in the Photos app, you cannot even see the name of a file or a video. A simple tip to see that is to open it, then tap Share and select Save to Files and you instantly see the name and the format. Once in the Files app, long press on a file and you've got a bunch of settings. Take a moment to look at that. Now for photos, you can tap on info to get a full EXIF readout. You can see when the image was created, when it was modified, last opened, the model it was captured on, the aperture, ISO, everything. You can also use the Files app to compress multiple files into one archive for easy sharing. You do this by tapping the dots button in the upper right corner, select multiple files. Now tap on the dots button again, this time in the bottom right corner and select compress. And voila, a new zip archive file will be created that you can then easily share with others. And you can also see your files as a list here and you can also easily sort them by their kind, name or size. Next up, the photos app. Did you know that you can hide photos from the camera roll? Simply select a few of those secretive photos of yours, tap share and select hide. And then they will disappear from your camera roll. They are not password protected, but you can only see them if you go into the Albums tab and scroll all the way down to the hidden folder. And that's where they are. Finally, on the topic of battery, open Spotlight Search and type Battery, then go into Battery Health. This is one piece of data that only iPhones give you and that's not available on Android. Brand new iPhones like this one will have 100%, but once you use the phone for a few months, the percentage starts dropping. And this shows the wear and tear on an iPhone battery and once it reaches about 80%, your phone may slow down and it's recommended that you swap the battery for a new one. 
and also if you charge overnight, it's a good idea to turn on the optimized battery charging toggle. This way your iPhone will know to charge up to 80% and delay the last 20% charge until just about you wake up. You will still wake up to a full battery, but the phone will spend less time charging at that above 80% range, which causes faster degradation of the battery. And once we started with the tips, did you know that you can use the Wondershare Doctor phone tool that sponsored this video to unlock your iPhone or Android phone even when you have forgotten your password? Dr. Phone's lock screen removal tool will save you a trip to a repair shop and allows you to unlock an Android phone or iPhone if you forget your password in just 5 minutes. It doesn't matter if you use a pin code, password or a pattern to lock your phone. This tool works with all of those. So let me show you how to do it. First, install the app on Windows or Mac, open it and click on the screen unlock feature. You can select the device you're using and in our case we have an iPhone SE and just follow the simple instructions. You need to first shut down the phone, then start it up, wait out for a few minutes until the app does its magic, and just like that you get access back to your device. Keep in mind that this process will wipe your data, so it's best to do it on a device that is backed up to the cloud. So if you want to have such a powerful tool for your devices, good news is that Dr. Phone is offering some incredible deals to our viewers. For Black Friday, get up to 85% off on Dr. Phone. You'll find links to this deal in the description, so make sure to check them out. So there you have it, our tips and tricks for the latest iPhones running iOS 14. I hope you found these useful and learned something new, and if you did, we'd appreciate you subscribing to our channel to get even more tech news. My name is Vic, you are with Phone Arena, and I will see you in the next one.